I want to start off this video by clarifying that in no way, shape, or form do I believe that these characters would replace Ting Yun, Bronya, Robin, Silverwolf, Pela. Like, of course, those characters fulfill their own role in their own team comps, and everything that they fulfill is absolutely amazing to the point that they're essentially pseudo universal. Uh, in my opinion, though, I do want to clarify that these. The, you know, these characters are a sort of new wave of supportive units that could enable the game to expand their team compositions as well as be able to create new game styles for all of us. And it just has me incredibly excited. Because in particular, I do have to admit that Jade and March 7th feel very harmony in terms of like how their kit works mind you they are sub dps's like i'm not saying that they're purely there for support because they do a lot of damage but at the same time they also help out another ally in order to allow them to do more damage and without this other ally their kit would just essentially be non-existent at the same time topaz is kind of the opposite where she doesn't really do like buffs for the team but she applies a debuff on one particular enemy through the use of numbi and if you get her light cone or her idol on one you essentially are getting even more value out of that because you're applying more debuffs and therefore your doctor ratio is able to do more damage and guarantee his follow-up attack so i don't know just flavor wise they feel like they were added as not really harmony units and not really nihility units, but that is a really positive thing for the game, right? Especially because we have seen what a character such as Acheron, right? Who, when you pair them up with more nihility in your team, she gets a buff for her damage. So what if we get something similar for the erudition? Because you're running three erudition characters, this new character is going to do much more damage or it's going to be able to trigger their follow-up attack much faster than they normally should. I don't know. Like, because, you know, like we've already seen teams in Pure Fiction running Herta, Himiko, and Jade. You essentially have your three, uh, whatchamacallit, erudition characters. And while not really much, I haven't really seen it much in terms of the hunt. I know that I have been running characters like Doctor Ratio and Topaz together. And I have, from time to time, also brought March 7th in to just test out how it would feel to have a third hunt character within these team comps. And personally speaking, I'm very satisfied, especially because in a follow-up tab sort of comp, March 7th really does thrive because she's able to attack much faster and much more frequently, which is an incredibly massive boon for her to have, right? So overall, it's just really, really nice, in my personal opinion. And... I'm sorry if I'm like rambling on too much. I didn't really make a script. I need to go back into making scripts because I am just all over the place, but I'm very excited with these concepts that are coming into my mind and how like other types of gameplay could be achieved through these characters. Uh, it just makes me very happy. So yeah, with that being said, let us see how this new wave of supports could contribute for future team compositions or even the creation of new characters within Starreal and why I'm very happy about it. I want to start things off by going over March 7th and Jade in particular because they are the newest characters and as such they are more designed towards this sort of thought process more so than Topaz has been in particular because this is something that could now be possibly be enforced better and more fleshed out than in the past, right? Well, sorry for that voice crack. But uh, essentially, something that we do see from both characters is the fact that they increase a selected ally's speed by either a percentage or a set amount. This essentially allows your DPS to do more damage because at the end of the day, it's essentially advancing forward your DPS by a decent amount, in all honesty. That being said, though, it is not like the same as an advanced forward such as Bronya or even Sparkle. Obviously, those are much more effective. However, 
you can't deny the fact that these characters were built like Harmony because they are encouraged to use their basic attacks instead of their skills. They are very skill point efficient, which is kind of odd for like a, a hunt character. Usually hunt characters demand you to use their skill all the time or erudition characters or destruction characters. Whoever is your DPS or sub DPS, you want to be spamming their skills as much as possible and your other units being like I don't know, your preservation characters your harmony characters those you want to use interchangeably right you want to be able to use your skills from whenever you need them but then you just do basic attacks when have you spammed ting yun's skill never because you know that you have three turns from when your ally does their attacks to then use it again. This is kind of the same philosophy. You use your skill once in the case of March 7th, and then you're you're done. You don't really need to worry about that anymore. You're completely skill point positive from that moment on. Jade is a little bit tricky because you are skill point positive, but you do have to refresh that contract from time to time. At the same time, they just end up giving that specific ally a buff. In particular, Jade, we know that she now does damage alongside whoever their Depth Collector is. While March 7th, if I recall correctly, it should be something along the lines of... Whatchamacallit? I'm like blanking out for a second, but it's not part of the main skill. It's actually on her Ascension 6 passive, where it says something that whenever March 7th uses their Enhanced Basic Attack, the next attack from the master is going to be increased by 60% quick damage and 36% break effect, which lasts for two whole turns, which is, in my opinion, absolutely wild of a buff to be able to give a character, especially if you are in a team that allows you to just be able to spam your attacks as much as possible. Hence why I genuinely think that, and I mean, this explains why my Doctor Ratio has been doing a lot more damage than I anticipated. But also, I'm just like, wow, that is that is just that is just crazy. And heck, it doesn't really end there. I'm not gonna go over Jade's, uh, what should we call it, Eidolons, because I don't feel like many people will be having Jade, much less their Eidolons, because everybody hated Jade, and understandably, they didn't pull for her. So we're not gonna go too in depth on those. However, March March's Eidolons are very interesting because. Because legitimately, we have one that increases March's speed whenever there is a Master on the field or like a Shifu on the field. There's also the fact that now, from this point on, every single time the Shifu uses their basic attack or a skill, essentially whenever it's their turn, because whenever you have a turn, you are obligated to use either of those two abilities. March 7th then releases a follow-up attack and essentially gains another stack, is able to provide the effect of whatchamacallit like the path of the shifu so overall it's just incredibly useful and then she's also able to regenerate energy like one of the harmony characters do I, like I, i'm like struggling with words because i really am not prepared for this but yeah one of her idols i don't afford which we haven't gotten yet but we will get soon legitimately is regenerates five energy which is literally what ting yun does so it's just that useful. And Idol on 6 makes it so that after using her ultimate, it increases the damage dealt by her own enhanced basic attack. I know it's not really for an ally, but it's still really nice to have because not only do you do now more damage, but so does your ally, which is absolutely insane. On the other hand, I know that I went too much into a March 7th uh, tangent there. I do like the fact that they're not harmony units. Jade and March are sub DPS characters. They are meant to do damage. So you need to build them as if they're going to do damage. However, they come in with a lovely perk that they're going to make your DPS to do more damage. So as a whole, it's just really neat because I feel, and I'm going to, re I'm repeating it again from before, just like Acheron had her 
if there are three Nihility characters on field, I feel like there could be a potential for a character to come out and be like, if there are three punch characters on field, then proceed to do obscene amounts of damage for absolutely no reason other than you restricted your team to hunt characters so now you're not going to be able to do like massive aoe and the opposite is also true where you can just get something for erudition where if you get three erudition characters again her kahim and Jade, then you just proceed to become a blender and absolutely delete anything that dares stand in your way and just insta clear pure fiction like there's no problem in the world because legitimately speaking these three characters are absolutely busted in pure fiction we, we really cannot deny that heck you know what we can even go even further beyond give us a character for the path of destruction that also kind of works like clara and yun lee that incentivizes your party to get attacked and then you proceed to do more damage. Like, I don't know, just if you have three, like, destruction characters, then you launch, a, like, a giga follow-up attack whenever you get attacked or whenever Nala gets attacked. Or after a set amount of, like, allies are attacked. Some, something similar to, whatchamacallit, are adventuring's passive. Then release the most obscene counter-attack you can possibly imagine. And win the game because the enemies decided to be too fast. As a matter of fact, that is kind of like the strategy that I've been using in order to defeat Stellaron Hunter Sam nowadays. I just like to bring in Clara and Yun Lee and watch Sam delete himself. Because I have been annoyed by his, like, or her, you know, because it's Firefly. By their massive movement speed, not movement speed, I'm like talking as if I'm like being in Genshin. I've been, I've been playing Genshin again. But... Like, essentially, their speed stat is so big that they get multiple turns in a row. So I said, screw it, and I just allowed him to beat me up and then have both of my characters counter like there's no tomorrow and just delete Sam that way. I have chosen the passive aggressiveness as my route for defeating Sam. Moving forward, though, we do have... Topaz, and I did kind of separate her from both Jade and March because she really does work more like a Nihilia unit. Everything from her kit is based on Numbi. And what does Numbi do? Well, apart from doing obscene amount of damage, he also applies a debuff onto the enemy. So Numbi is just able to increase all damage from follow-up attacks. I believe it increases crit damage from follow-up attacks as well. There's also the fact that you can get Topaz's idol on one, meaning you do even more damage. And if you get her light cone, the African like I know that the that the debuff is called like the tame debuff. Oh, worrisome bliss. There we go. If you get that light cone, then you get another debuff and do more damage. And it's specifically tailored for follow-up attack units, but at the same time, you could kind of do this for just a single whatchamacallit like for for the hunt you can specialize this on the hunt and make the most obscene apocalyptic shadow slayer in the world and i honestly vibe with that however i'm probably just saying this just because i personally am a huge fan of the path of nihility I've always been adoring this path. I'm gonna get Zhao Cho because he's absolutely amazing. Also, his trailer was absolutely sick. A uh, huge fan. So, therefore, I'm pulling for him and his light cone. Uh, I'm getting divert. I'm, I'm diverting from the main point. The main thing is the fact that there are characters that could potentially just apply a debuff that is specific to the, whatchamacallit, to your party's, like, path could be incredibly interesting right and i kind of say this because there is a part of me that is a little bit annoyed with clara in particular uh, i'm not saying that clara is a bad character and i do want to specify that no clara is still one of my favorite characters and i still adore using her in order to just clear content it just feels strange that her markov counter is not considered a debuff it's considered as other effects. 
And while I understand why it is other effects, because it only would apply for Claire's damage, something similar to that, but essentially be, hey, uh, whenever this unit attacks an ally, actually not when like they attack an ally, because then that would be too broken, but when they specifically attack an ally from the path of destruction, then this individual who I'm just making this a theoretical will proceed to counterattack and do massive damage for every single character of the Path of Destruction that has been hit. So it kind of encourages you to use this character against an enemy that specializes on cone attacks or even AoE attacks. In the case of Erudition, I, I really have no idea because we already have Ru and Mei and that's a little bit hard to complete, especially with how just pure fiction is, where you just turn everything into a blender. That I feel would be like the hardest place for me to figure out what to do. But if I had to do something, I would probably go with the Jiao Cho route, where it's, hey, create an aura. Hey, create like, you know, some, like essentially how Run May does, but for the enemies and have them be suffering from these debuffs in order for my other Erudition characters to absolutely destroy them. I feel like that could be interesting. But yeah, I don't, I'm just... I wanted to try something a little bit different for this week's video. And I promise, like, this time... I know I've been saying, oh, hey, I'm gonna do, like, two uploads a week, and here I am still uploading once a week, uh, because everything got so hectic. But I will try this incoming week to actually do two videos a week see how that works i do want to actually make analysis on these things and pour in more time and effort into these uh so i mean so you all can enjoy them and because i want to expand the community that we're having because i know that we talk a lot about lore about game design but I kind of want to focus also a lot of that part into game design. Because I have been adoring hearing from you guys how you would create your own super break unit or your new boss fight or a new nihility unit. Just these conversations that I get to have with you all are really, really cool. And I'm not going to deny it does fill my heart with a passion of mine that I abandoned. This is going to be a quick heart of heart moment. I know that this probably is not like the best video for me to be saying these things because it's probably going to flop because I've just been rambling on in the weirdest way possible. But I wanted to be a game designer at some point in time. And I gave up that dream. And I did feel a bit bad about that. But at the same time, I'm kind of happy that I didn't, that I'm actually on YouTube rather than on an office coding my life away. Uh, I willingly chose not to go into that field. But now that I'm here doing these things, I want to promote that. And it's probably from all my time that I had been browsing through custom Hearthstone cards, custom magic cards. I want to see if there is a way for us to start a community like that. I don't know, Honkai Star Rail custom characters, Honkai Star Rail custom artifacts, something along those lines, or I don't know, like just custom, cust I cannot words, custom Honkai Star Rail. You can create your own boss fight, your own like character, things like that. I have an idea for a boss fight that I'm cooking up that I have abandoned because my ADHD has also been my absolute worst enemy. But I have something in mind that could be a little bit big, uh, could be a little bit complex, but I want to show you all. So, hey, if you're enjoying this sort of content, and apologies again for me, like, rambling on way more than I probably should, and, like, just... This video really is unscripted because I didn't have time to make a proper video, and I really do apologize. I know I last time, like, last week's video, I said I would improve on that and here i am not really pulling through but this incoming week it should be better uh i'm just thankful if you have like watched all the way up to this point in the video 
if you enjoy this sort of content or if you enjoy the sort of ideas that I'm wanting to pitch in for future Star Real content, for new, different, more creative Star Real content, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, let me know what you also would like to see for this channel because I am just happy with this community that we're having. Also, I'm going to try to actually revive my Discord. I put my Discord on under maintenance and I need to actually prettify it and adapt it to what I want for the community. So, yeah, uh, with all that being said, I, I'm just very thankful. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. And yeah, leave down in the comments below how you would create your own gimmicks for non harmony slash non nihility characters. I don't know how I wanted to like phrase that, but yeah, essentially non supportive support characters. How would you create one? I would love to know. I'm going to be down in the comments replying to every single comment that I see. So. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Sorry once again for the giga tangents that I'm going on. And I'll see you all properly next week. Bye.